Hi there, I am Ian Hoy, your editor at International Fire and Safety Journal. I am here at the NEC in Birmingham today for the Fire Safety Event 2025. And I'm about to speak to Siftin Nakvi, the Head of Marketing at Safety Technology International, or STI. So, STI began with tech coverings and manual call play. So how has your portfolio grown since then? Well, it's, it's quite a, a heartwarming um, story when you look at the origins of where we came about and where we're setting off to. So the products have evolved uh, while still keeping into the DNA and the heritage of the company. Um, so it was in the late 1970s, early 1980s, uh, when Jack Taylor, the, the founder of our company, did it. first came up with the design for the cover for the manual ball points. Um, and the whole purpose behind that was to prevent false fire alarms, to stop accidental uh, activations, stop malicious activity. Uh, and through that DNA and through that heritage, we've continued that throughout the rest of our products. So there's a, a key emphasis on protection of life critical safety devices. Uh, and it's not only just for the manual glow points, it could be anything from a smoke detector with our cage products, it could be anything from enclosures, switches, uh, and we have morphed into other areas of the business as well, still sticking to fire as the key industry uh, when it comes to things like call points, push burns, mm -hmm. uh, and we have evolved all of the time, but still keeping that, that, that same heritage and DNA when it comes to protecting life safety equipment. So, as, as you just said, false alarms are an occurring issue. Mm -hmm. How are your latest devices helping organizations cut down on these disruptions? So it's it's a, it's a market that we've been well aware of. Uh, we've been, the company was formed based on false fire alarm activations. We've been working quite closely with a lot of different players of different vertical markets with that same key pain point of false activations. Um, and what we're doing to, to help kind of minimize that is uh, helping, helping our customers uh, have a better understanding and education behind the products using our stopper covers, uh, making those available for yes. different dimensions, different sizes, different cases, whether it's indoor or whether it's outdoor. Um, and we're, we're ensuring then that there's a full 360 so they have full coverage of the products um, uh, and also using different uh, techniques and technologies to, to help prevent and deter any, any false activations. So I know that you recently introduced new elements to your GF and GX3 push button ranges. Well, can you just walk me through these a little bit? Sure, I think so. The, from a timing perspective and linking on to the last question, mm -hmm. uh, the G3 GF is a revolutionary, one of a kind type of product. Um, and in terms of how we use that to stop false activations, uh, to, uh, to, to deter repeat offenders and criminal activity, uh, in, in its essence, that's what it's designed to do and that's what it's for. So with the integration of an IP camera within that product, we're, we're helping the market understand that, well, actually there's there's more to preventing false fire alarms than just having a polycarp cover on top. There are other ways that we can do that. And that's through introducing technology into that uh, equation. Um, so that's something we're quite proud of. It's, it's new to the market. We've been getting some really, really good feedback, not, not only from this show, but uh, also in the IC, uh, ISC last week. So um, yeah, it's great to see that the pain point is still Quite relevant in the market, how we are trying to find better solutions to the problem, and through the use of technology and through the use of uh, our engineering teams, both here and in the US, yeah. we're able to come up with a, a good product for the end market. So, one of the major features that you just spoke about was the built-in IT camera. How, how does it function, and what are its sort of use cases? Where is this most used? Yeah, so so we we try to make this as plug and play and out of the box experience as possible. Um, it's simply uh, an IP camera which is integrated into the button. It's OnViv compatible, so it will allow the end user to connect to their existing network. But as well as doing that, if they don't have the, exi the existing network, they can use it as a standalone device using a, a, an SD card or a slot. Um, we try to emphasize on the ease of installation while using technology. Everything is going down the route of AI and IoT. Um, so, so helping our end customers have some kind of... Uh, form of physical evidence and data to help them support their day to day uh, and even through some of the conversations that we've had today with some facilities managers and people within different markets and industries um, it, you know we, we can come to the conclusion that it is going to be useful and helpful in a lot of different markets. So can you talk a bit about some of the features that you've built in to help installers with the setup of like compliant assets? Sure well, I mean we, we've this has been three or four years in the making a lot of that time is to do with compliance, making sure that everything is above board. It's a UL compliant product. 
Um, we've also helped the installer to make sure that there's a, an ease of installation in the end. And by having our connector blocks on the back, making it very, very easy and time efficient for installers to go in and, and install the product. But we also have, again, adding uh, to the whole innovation and our DNA of our company, uh, we have a three-in-one but button scenario. So depending on the operation of the button, if you wanted it as a turn to reset or a key to reset or momentary, this is something that you can do on the fly. Yeah. Um, uh, all through just moving a screw at the the back end of the product through a simple latch and, and offering the customers and the end users that level of flexibility and ease of use. Um, my final question is, where is SDI heading next? Is there any new technologies or sectors you're focusing on or anything you want to share about what you've got coming up? Yeah, I, th I think we, we used uh, the tagline of uh, access control meets intrusion detection, which is a little bit aside from fire. I think fire has always been our bread and butter, uh, but we do realize that those pain points that we see in the fire industry when it comes to false fire alarm activations, pressing buttons when they shouldn't be pressing buttons, is also representative in other areas as well. Mm -hmm. And that could be things like exit controls, entry exit through unauthorized doors. Um, and that's why this is a, a multi-sector, multi-purpose product, because as well as having a fire version, we also have a multi-purpose version as well. So that can be used in the field of access control using the green colors. Uh, we have six different color variables. I think in the UK specifically, we're seeing the um, the Terrorism Act with Martin's law coming into, into force last week. Yes. Uh, that's driving the use of more CCTVs in certain locations. Uh, and that's one of the industries that we're certainly focusing on moving forward, uh, be it blue or yellow. I know our, our friends in the US are using yellow and blue a lot in their school environments for, for their lockdown buttons. Uh, and that's something that we're also looking at here in the UK as well. So yeah, it, as a to conclude, it's quite a, a multi universal products, multi-verticals, um, lots of different verticals that we can tap into. But uh, with the features and benefits of the of the product itself, uh, we're understanding and actually finding that there are quite a lot of different use cases for this for this product heading forward. Very much. Okay, so Dave, thank you so much for speaking this space. It was such a pleasure to speak to you and to hear all about the solutions you've got on offer. So thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you.